and then it just falls into the falls into the little thing. But Wilco sells this guy. That thing just hooks right into there like that. Look, goes like. You can call it a to-do list or a procrastination list, but whatever it is, it needs to get done before we can hit the road. Our list falls into basically three buckets, a van bucket, a home bucket, and a health bucket. Let's start with the van bucket. While getting the bikes ready for the long road, John noticed a crack in the Hollywood rack. John wants to show you the situation. I'm gonna to try to show you here, but we're gonna take it apart more so you can see the problem here. There's the crack that developed on either side. Yeah. Yep, goes all the way to the bolt. On both sides. John said, we don't want anybody to think we're bad-mouthing Hollywood. We use this thing in ways that people don't use it. We take it down really rough roads, so it's put under a lot more stress than it should be. And you can see from all that rubbing, it's damaged the bolt as well. But we have a new one, right? Yep. And here's the new piece that Hollywood sent us. It wasn't free though. <laughs> we had to pay for it. $70. John had issues with the pole alignment and they actually had to, we had to send it back and get another, another one. So if you, this happens to you, you wanna make sure the whole alignment is right. I think the newer versions use a carriage bolt. So that is square holes as opposed to round holes, but ours is, Old enough to where it's, that's the design, so. There we go. Here is the new one. The last thing are new pads. We lubed it up about four times and got it on there. The next item are our bikes and they needed a thorough cleaning as well as a tune-up. I have a slow leak in my back tire and John was trying to get it fixed but he's got a bolt down here that is stripped. It's really a, like a, a one or two time use screw. And then they put a little layer of Loctite on it. So when you put it in there, you got to really kind of force it. And that screw head just isn't designed to take that kind of wear. Mm -hmm. But what's the fix? I'm going to take it down to a bike shop where they actually have the tool to remove that faster. Because you can't take this tire off without taking this cage off. And I have uh, used every device I can think of to get it off. They're going to have the tools to do it though. Okay, what are you doing, John? Well, I'm trying to prevent any of the oil from getting on the brakes because that really screws them up. So this little gizmo protects you. So what are you spraying there? It's oh, it's LPS3. LPS3, okay. just chain lube. And then it just falls into the... It falls into the little thing there, right okay. there. Bike shops are getting busy, so don't wait to the last minute to get your tune up. We're lucky to have quite a few good bicycle shops in our area. Tune-up was about 150 bucks. They replaced a couple cables, which added a few more bucks, uh, but it runs great and uh, no, no squeaks. Next up is relocating our license plate. A number of you have commented that our license plate is not visible when the bikes are on the back, so we finally took care of that. This was the original one we ordered. It was, what, $65? $65. And this is the problem. <laughs> yeah, you can't open the swing hitch. So we went back to the drawing board. But Wilco sells this guy and it bolts on over here. So no problem. And that one was $75? 57, but it was 22 bucks. Yeah, so 75 bucks. <laughs> Before we head out on a basically a 10,000 mile journey, we need to have the van serviced to make sure that everything's in good working order, including having the oil changed. We usually have the oil changed at 10,000 miles, but this time it's going to be just 8,500 miles. I also send the oil off to Blackstone for an analysis and uh, everything came back good. 
You've already seen that we did the tires down at Agile Off-Road about a month ago. Uh, we've just also ordered a spare tire cover because those don't last too long and we've had ours for about three or four years. So that's done. Two projects inside the van. I redid the duvet cover in our van. Uh, the other one was just kind of a makeshift kind of thing. It was a hand-me-down duvet cover that I had added some Velcro to. And so I decided that I would remake that project. This is my prototype duvet cover. You've probably seen it in previous videos. It has this little pocket sewn in for our feet. And it's just basically a duvet cover with a down comforter inside. And these are the new sheets I've just purchased. So I have two queen size flat sheets. And then I thought, well, I don't actually need a full half, a, a queen size sheet for the duvet, this part, for this pocket part. And so I picked up a twin, which was a lot less expensive. And now I'm just waiting for the zipper that I've ordered from a Zipper Lady. So I'm gonna do a zipper and I'm gonna to try to figure out how to put the zipper at the bottom. It's a little bit more of a challenge when you, you're dealing with three layers and trying to get the mechanics right. So let's get started. So now I'm gonna sew in the invisible zipper, but if you're not comfortable sewing zippers, then you can use Velcro. The second project was to come up with a better system for mounting my phone. When I'm sitting up front and I want to grab some quick video, it's really a pain in the rear end to have to disconnect from some kind of a phone mount. When I discovered that Peak Design was having a Kickstarter campaign on a whole new set of equipment, I jumped at it because I like Peak Design. They make really well thought out equipment. So I bought the whole kit and caboodle. I have mounted the two phone mounts. I actually bought an extra phone mount. Uh, I put one in the front and then one in the back right next to the bed and that's working out really well. First I wiped the surface, which is textured plastic, with the included alcohol pad. But to ensure a good stick, I followed it up with 3M primer that you can purchase in single-use sticks. They're great to have on hand. I'll include a link in the description box. Peak Design also makes phone mounts for bicycles, so I bought uh, actually two different styles. When John saw mine, he decided he also wanted the Peak Design uh, phone cover and mounts because they work together. That thing just hooks right into there like that. Some of you have asked about the Moonshade and whether it will scratch the paint on your car when you attach that magnet to it. The Moonshade comes with both magnets and suction cups, so you can use one or the other. But we also recently discovered that Moonshade makes a small silicone cover that you put on the magnets to help protect your paint. So we ordered those. Moonshade makes these silicone covers so you don't, you're less likely to scratch the paint on your car. These things are really tough. <laughs> John has a pair of Patagonia pants that he loves and the zipper broke. So I thought I'd share a little bit of information about Patagonia and their program of trying to get people to fix and repair equipment that they already own. He has a pair of Patagonia pants that he's probably had for 15 years. You can send it to Patagonia, but I'm told that it takes about 10 weeks to get something back. But they will send you uh, parts. So if, for example, on this one, I need a new zipper. 
I mean, I could have found a black zipper to go with his pants, but it's not quite the same. Uh, they have, uh, you know, it's a lighter weight fabric. It's a little bit wider. Anyway, it, it's nice to have the original zipper. So he sent them, uh, they have a chat line, and he gave them the, the pants part number, and they said, yes, that's a very old pair of pants, and they sent him a zipper. So I have the zipper and two zipper pulls. Now, it does not come with the zipper pull attached, but there are great uh, tutorials online will teach you how to add, how to put a zipper pull on a zipper. This should be a fairly easy project because it is, all I have to do is basically uh, rip out this top part and then the zipper itself, and then I should be able to get that on there pretty easily. You know, he's tall and it's really hard for him to find pants that he really likes, especially, you know, rugged outdoor type pants. So I'll get this, I'll get working on this project and then move on to some more. It's always interesting to unpick a commercially made piece of clothing to see how they construct it. And I notice as I rip this out, they use some kind of a tape, a double-sided tape to uh, hold it down before they started stitching. If you want some, you can get it from Sailrite. I think I am going to use the double-sided tape to put this down before I stitch the, uh, the zipper. John's gonna model my zipper repair. <laughs> Here, here's the full model. <laughs> now let's move on to the home front. And after five years of travel, we have neglected so many things around the house. So we've tackled a few of those. One was the deck. Kind of left you guys stranded when I didn't follow up on what we did with the deck. We actually only just almost finished it last week. And part of the reason that it's only almost finished is because we need a new roof. So we have sorted out and found somebody to re-roof our house. It's gonna be done actually while we're gone. And our neighbor next door, Bruce, is going to oversee the project for us. I got a new, uh, our, what do they call this, speed square? Look, it goes like that. It's kinda wow. neat. <laughs> So do you want to build decks for a living? I'm exhausted. I don't think old women are supposed to do this. <laughs> Pretty much finished. We didn't want to put the railing around until the roof was finished. We installed a new door lock last week and I'm really loving it. I watched it on a channel called, uh, it's called Locksmith Recommends and he had recommended it. We bought it and installed it and it's working wonderfully. I love that I can come up to the door of the house and just put my fingerprint on there and the door opens. Of course, you can also use codes, but one of the reasons we wanted to get this is so that we could give Bruce a code so that he could have access to the house during the roof uh, work. I do like this lock. So nice to come home from a walk and all I have to do is that and the door is open. Locked. Okay, the last things on the list. Well, the second to the last is the, the garden work. And a lot of people call it work. I actually call it fun. I love working in the garden. But uh, I had several projects that I've been delaying on doing. One was replacing the garden beds that had become so old and, and uh, the wood was rotting.
and one project to make it a lot easier for whomever is going to watch your garden while you're gone is to have everything mulched. And so we had a big load of mulch dropped off and that will really help to keep down the weeds and also make it so you don't have to feed or water as much. Whoop, 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 whoop. And then, of course, you need some irrigation to go along with that. So I've actually uh, checked all of the irrigation around the house and made sure that uh, things were properly spaced and added lines where they needed it. Here is a tip for making it easy to join up irrigation tubing. Just use some boiling water. I put it in a coffee mug. And finally, health. Uh, the reason we have been home so long, and this is with John's permission I share this information, John has AFib, and for whatever reason, his uh, thyroid uh, started acting up, and that was triggering his AFib. So after uh, three trips to the emergency room and uh, lots and lots of doctor visits, he is back on track again, exercising as much as ever, and doing quite well. So. So we're glad to be able to hit the road with a clear conscience. So that is the last video I'm going to do before we hit the road. So there will not be a video next week. It gets rather hectic the week before trying to get everything done and sorted and, and all of that. So no video next week, but the following one, we will be on the road for our cross country trip across US, uh, along US 6, all the way to Provincetown and then to Canada. And then of course in July down for the Ragbri ride the ride across Iowa. I hope this has been helpful. Um, make your list, get on it, and get on the road. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.